connection is weak. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't Great. do like a cool pose for this one. I should have. Should have done one. It's too late. You got to get on the first frame of the uh, the thing there. When it opens. Yeah, yeah. This is exactly as soon as it opens. Gotcha. Next time I'll remember. Next Get in my fighting pose or something. Yeah, yeah. We can do like Crouching a, Tiger, Hidden Dragon style. Like some fighting game style poses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then what's, your, what's your plans for the weekend whenever we get out of here? Uh, I have, I'm actually the best man in a wedding. Um, one of my best friends from high school. And tomorrow I have to go to his uh, engagement party down in Virginia. So that'll probably be all day Saturday. Uh, it's like an hour and a half drive to his sister's house where it's going to be at. So busy day tomorrow. And then Sunday, uh, I'll be doing a lot of nothing. I'll be relaxing, taking it easy. <laughs> All right, we got go. some people flooding in. Hey, everybody. Uh, I won't be doing much. I'll just be enjoying my weekend, you know, staying at home. Yeah, that's, good stuff. that's the best way to do it. But it thank you, everyone, for joining us. It's uh, CG Live. Um, I'm your host, as always. I got, uh, I'm got. i joined by my lovely, lovely co co-star, Dean, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Steely Dan, Dan the man. Here live, cartridges galore, Frederick, Maryland. How and, you doing? Uh, yeah, we're, we're really happy to have you guys in. Uh, it's a new month, you know, May. Mother's Day is very, very close to coming up. Um, right around the corner. As of right now, we're looking at, what, nine days? Nine days, I think? Yeah, nine days. Yep. So um, make sure you guys, you know, do do stuff for your mother, you know. Even if you don't like her all that much, she... She did birth you into this world, so you owe her, whether you like it or not. Yeah, she did uh, push you out there, but uh, <laughs> uh, ask your mom if you didn't get that reference, kids. <laughs> now, um, as in, uh, this is our first show of the month, we're going to be going over our monthly deals right off the bat for you. We went over them last time at the end, um, but this week we're going to... And I'll get a little better camera angle there, a nice little thing for you guys. So I'm going to just take a few seconds here right at the right off the, the gate to go over, you know, some of our monthly specials if you guys haven't seen them on the site yet. So, back camera. All right. So first things first, we're going to go over, it is the, the mother of savings, mother load of savings in May. Um, we're going to get $10 off every handheld. So that's, you know, your Game Boys, Game Gears, DS, PSPs, PS Vitas, all that stuff. And then... We've got buy two, get one free for the pre-owned stuff on the new gen system. So that's Xbox One, Wii U, and if we had them, Nintendo Switch, and the PS4 games. Even including, you know, look at that, Call of Duty and Neo. Hmm, that might be a little hint of what we're going to be talking about here on the show there. And then on Mother's Day, all you moms out there are going to be getting $5 off any purchase of 15 or more. You know, just for being a mom, we, we love you guys. We, I love my mom. Dan, do you love, love your you mom? mom? Love you, mom. <laughs> so if our moms watch this today, we've uh, sucked up enough. <laughs> <laughs> and then this one right here is a big one. Uh, if you guys like to collect, you know, uh, you, if, you, if, you, if you guys are about completing, like, you know, your collections of any system, you know, Wii, uh, PS2, all the NES stuff, you're going to be able to get four games for 10 bucks as long as they're, you know, 537 or less. So basically, if, if you're like me and you're, you're trying to complete a few systems, this is a perfect deal. That will get you, you know, 250 a game, you know, up to $5.37. You know, it's, it's really nice to collect some of those, uh, basically the ones you're not really gunning for, you know, but, you know, they're always nice to get because... You just need to complete you have the to complete. Yeah, you have to complete your collection. I'm going to be, you know, picking up a few Wii U games and few PS2 games, you know. I'll be grabbing a couple of SNES myself. <clears throat> yeah. Loading up on that, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I do like collecting, so hopefully we we uh get a get a little bit of people going on that one. Like I said, that is probably my favorite deal this month. Uh just because, you know, I it, it's really nice to collect, you know, some of that big back lot of stuff that you don't really feel like spending a lot of money on. Because, you know, you got to buy like 500 games, you know, just for a collection. So right. it's really nice to have some of that already be ironed out and as easy as possible. So Especially with, with a good deal. Yeah, especially especially with a good deal. Right. So with May, we're going to be talking about a few different things, but we're going to be talking about anime this month. <laughs> and, anime, uh, it's something I don't know very much <laughs> about at all. I'll be the first to uh, admit that right now. Yeah, Dan, I've seen maybe one anime in my life. Dan, Dan is not a big anime guy, but you know we we do like anime around here. Even I don't hate. 
Yeah, we don't hate. No. We're going to be talking about stuff from Japan, too. So not just the anime, but stuff that comes from Japan um, all May. You know, we're not sponsored or anything. We just want to, you know, have a little fun theme to go by. Uh, we're going to be you know, basically try to theme it up every week. So that's what we're going to be doing for this week. Um, Dan, if you want to jump into the first... Uh, anime game that we're doing today <laughs> well my an- anime games are not really anime uh but they i guess they could sort of kind of fall into that genre a little bit if y'all can't read that that's final fantasy 15 i'm a huge huge fan of the final fantasy series i love them i've been playing them since i was a kid uh with the nes and then to the snes and then so on and so on um this game is amazing. I loved it. I was a little hesitant at first about it. I uh, read a lot of reviews, read some mixed reviews on it. The gameplay is different, um, but it's amazing. I love it. Uh, two new DLCs just dropped this month, uh, if you all didn't know that. Um, it's going to be, well, not this month, actually. It was last month they dropped, but uh, it's got Gladiolus and, I believe, Prompto missions. So you get to play as them, uh, respectively. Uh, you get to see their own side of the story and how everything plays out. Um, if you don't know, it, it's featured four characters. Uh, Noctis is the uh, main character, the prince. Uh, Gladiolus is the big tough guy. Prompt is the jokester, and uh, Ignis is like the uh, smart guy. But uh, it's a really fantastic game. Lots of fun. I beat it already. I have to go through and do the hard run now. Uh, got to get all the good gear and everything like that. I also got to do my DLCs. Uh, it's just been hard to find time. So, and for you guys out there who actually do like the the old old style old style of covers and the Japanese covers, they actually do have you covered. So this is what, you know, our standard cover is going to look like, but they included a really cool, and this is the manual, I think, a uh, little pamphlet there. Nice little pamphlet manual. I like it more than nothing, I suppose. Right. But uh, and there's some advertising for some other games they're doing here. Got a couple different ones. So, yeah, there's your four heroes right there. Yep. And look at this guy. Isn't he handsome? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, like I was saying, they do have a nice reversible cover. Look at that. That's dope. Really cool. That is really dope. Like, really reminiscent of the old school, like, Japanese ones where they just had complete white and just the, plain. Yep. the Final Fantasy and stuff like that. So it's plain black, and there's a reason for that in the world. Uh, you know, black is very religious in Final Fantasy XV. Um, there's some really cool videos out there on YouTube, you know, that kind of go over... You know some of the fictional religions that they create for this game, and they had to tone that down in the final game because of uh, you know China and uh, stuff like that. Not a big, they're not a big fan of seeing religions in their video games, but diversity is not a big thing over there. You can you can still kind of you, there's a lot of the uh, inspirations that are just worn on their sleeves. That's why everyone wears black. It's not just edgy and cool and stuff like that. It actually does Ooh, have I'm cool. I'm edgy a nice and black. nice little lore lore perspective. And uh, I, I think it's a really cool game. I played the first, you know, few hours just to you know, tackle on to what Dan said. And uh, I definitely did play, you know, five or six hours. I enjoyed myself quite a bit, and I want to look. I look forward to playing some more. I didn't own the a copy of the game, and I'm planning on picking one up soon. But definitely cool. I heard the DLC is cool. Uh, what is this guy's name? The big guy. That's uh, uh, uh not Prompto, not Ignis. He's uh, he's the other guy. <laughs> he's the other guy. The one I can't remember the name of. Right yeah, the now. one guy. I'm trying. The, the guy. I called handsome, baby. Gladiolus, that's Gladiolus. His name. yeah, he's Gladiolus. my favorite. I love that guy. Yeah, he's awesome. Um, Carries a big so sword around. I'm gonna try. I want to play that DLC. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be really cool because at each top part in the game, you lose a character. So Gladiolus goes off and says he's got to go do some stuff. So then it's just you and the other guys, and then oh, okay, so everybody. that's what you're playing. Exactly, yeah. oh, okay. exactly. Well, so really you basically see their perspective on that, which is pretty neat. And then um, I'm gonna talk about a little game. This is not really well known, but I mean, if you if if anyone has a PlayStation Vita, and since we are doing the Ten dollars off handheld games. I figured this would be a nice little game. If you guys do uh, pick up a PlayStation Vita, use that ten dollars for good and pick up a copy of Freedom Wars. Now, this game has been out on the Vita for a little bit. Uh, I think it's like four or five years old at this point. But it's got it's got a really cool Monster Hunter style um, combat to it. If you've ever played the Monster Hunter games. It's about taking down big things, and a lot of teamwork gets put into that. This one, you have guns, and you do have, you know, your big, you know, axes and stuff like that. Excuse me, folks. I got some <laughs> customers. It looks like coming in here. So, hey guys, how y'all doing today? You do have like your axes, Good. and you do have uh, you that kind of stuff. Uh, that in. does. But in this game, you'll create two work. characters. You create your normal main character, and then you get like a uh, robot who will assist you in doing whatever you want to do. And that robot character, you also create. So you can basically create two characters, you know, have a little dich- dichotomy going on there. And uh, 
to go into the story a little bit, you play in like kind of a dystopian future where everyone's like deemed a prisoner and you have to like basically work to uh, take years off your sentence. Uh, I think you start off with like a million years and then you basically from there you kind of yeah, you try to yeah. take down creatures and provide for the colony and stuff to get your years down to you know zero because you want to be free and that's where the freedom wars come into. Like I said, it's a lot of fun. It'll definitely keep you occupied for you know fifty plus hours if you actually give it a if actually give it a go. Uh, I can't recommend it more. I, I really do genuinely enjoy that game. Another game uh, that actually came in this week, and if you guys actually follow on the Facebook page, I'm sure you've seen that little picture of the game uh, when I posted it up there. But we're looking at the Mystical Ninja. Um, this is a Super Nintendo game. It's not, like I said, it's not an anime game, but it is super engrossed in Japanese culture and stuff like that. Uh, it's made by Konami back when they weren't the worst company ever. And um, <laughs> uh, you play as Goemon in this game, I believe. That's his name. Uh, it seems like if you've ever played like Odin Sphere and, you know, old school beat em ups and stuff like that, it's kind of reminiscent of those two things. You're going to be walk walking around, you know, a map. I played it for maybe like two hours. And, um,. It seems like you do you know, do a lot of traveling, and you have to like talk to, yeah, yeah. you know, talk to people, yeah, you know, that. mug people for money. <laughs> it's old school GTA basically, in uh, feudal Japan. So you will uh, be attacking people. You will be taking their money, and you'll be you know sl sleeping at inns, you know, fighting demons and stuff like that. I beat the first boss. Um, it's kind of like a Ghost Girl, and you'll have to like reflect plates and stuff like that. It's it's pretty challenging. Um, I won't lie, I think the Mystical Ninja is a cool game. I think there was one on the 64 too. Uh, we don't have that one right now, but uh, I'm, I'm eager to try it out. Um, I did bring a few more games to talk to you guys about, and I know everyone's like, oh, please get this guy off my screen. Where's Dan? We need Dan back. But he's uh, busy helping some people out, you know, doing his civic duty. Another game I want to talk about is a recently released one, like I said, if you guys do keep up with you know, PlayStation 4 and stuff. Oh, you probably yeah, heard this game. Uh, Neo? Yeah. Like, they come out, foot soldiers come out of the signs on the buildings. Now, unfortunately, yeah. I haven't gotten to touch the actual final release, but I was able to play it twice in beta. And man, if you guys have ever played Dark Souls, I can't recommend the game more than Neo. It's got incredible, incredible graphics. Um, and I'm not a big graphics guy, but it does allow you to dumb it down to get you going at 60 frames per second, which is a big, big plus in my book. Hey, it's got a little advertisement for Horizon. <laughs> but yeah, so this game you play, oh, I can't remember the guy's name. It's like Edward or something like that. You're basically playing through a Japanese uh, a, a story, I think. It's like, a, it's like a little tale they tell their kids um, about some guy who came in from the West and uh, learned their culture and stuff like that. And took down demons and stuff like that. So yeah, you will be fighting a lot of baddies in this one. I can't recommend it more. It's a fresh game. It just came out this year. I, you're going to be hearing about this game at the end of the year. People are going to be talking. Game of the Year contenders, expect Neo to be one of them. No doubt. Definitely without question. Now, a game I play a lot, um, and this isn't the most current version you can find. Um, the most current version is called uh, Revelator, but this is Guilty Gear Exard Sign. Now, this is the third game in the Guilty Gear X series. I believe that's the way it works. There's a bunch of different Guilty Gear styles. Um, and this is the third X game. And then this one still has the manual. So you manual guys out there uh, will be happy to see that. And for me, I like this. It's a full-colored manual. So it's going to teach you the characters and how to do like their inputs and stuff like that. So I, I like that kind of stuff. You know, When, when you're starting a fighting game, you, you kind of always need to go through what each character does and can do and I think having that in the manual is definitely a big help um, so yeah this game does use uh, 3d sprites or not 3d sprites but they use 3d models unlike you know some of the other uh, arc system games if you guys are familiar with them they do blaze blue uh, they did you know the old old school like you know guilty gear games where they use sprite art for those ones just like you know, they did back in third strike and stuff like that but in this one they decided to use 3D models, and I can't really show it off here, but look at those 3D models. They are so beautiful in this game. If you've never, like, seen or gameplay or played this game, please do yourself a favor. Go to YouTube, look it up. Guilty Gear Exard. That's XRD. Yeah, I know. It's very strange, very Japanese in its title. XRD. Um, 
and that will show you how how just beautiful and gorgeous some of those some of the, everything in that game looks. And um, man, I wonder how the audio levels are sounding right now. <laughs> All right, so to go back a little bit now, this one I'm just kind of promoting because it's a nice uh, series that's been around for a long time. And I'm sure you guys have heard of it, maybe because there was a big movie that came out two months ago. Uh, and that's Ghost in the Shell. And this is Standalone Complex on the PlayStation 2. And I don't really know much about Ghost in the Shell. I'm really looking forward to the Blu-ray release of the movie. I'm going to get in on it. I like Scarlett Johansson. She's a very attractive woman. What do you say, Dan? Scarlett. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we now realize that Dan might swing for the other team. <laughs> That's perfectly fine, guys. We're not here to judge you. But, uh, I just um, can't stand her acting. It's, she's, her acting is so lame. Not a good actor, but we're not talking about her acting ability. Well, that's, yeah, <laughs> that's so, yeah, uh, this is Ghost in the Shell. Uh, I, like I said, I'm not entirely certain about what Ghost in the Shell is about. I know there's a robot named Makoto. It was like, a, I guess, like a hybrid of a human or something. Okay, cool. Glad to see the audio is good. We've got a lot of uh, people in the store. Love you guys. Thanks for visiting. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Dan's just chatting him up. That's what I do. Yeah, what he does. All right. One more game I'm going to talk about here. I've got, I've still got a few games here. I'm trying to keep it a little bit fresh. You know? We're going with a theme here, folks. Stick with me. It's, uh, Kingdom Hearts. I'm sure everyone's heard of this game franchise by now. And this one right here is 2.8 Prologue Final Chapter. So this is the very last game they're going to release before Kingdom Hearts 3. And I do mean like new game that has like some actual content. They did release 2 and 1. Famicom, which is the Japanese Big. version of Super Nintendo. You can play their games. But yeah, they, they did release uh, um, 1.5 HD and 2.5 HD after this game. But this is the, the final game before the actual, like, events of 3. It's going to go over, you know, what happens with Aqua um, in the Kingdom Hearts point two Birth by Sleep Fragmentary Passage. My well, man, I'll tell you, trying to read the Kingdom Hearts stuff is so, it's so Japanese in its title. They, they love just making up titles. You know, Dream Drop Distance, you know, what is this, Kingdom Hearts X back cover? Like, <laughs> where do they come up with it? But yeah, if you guys haven't heard of Kingdom Hearts before, I'll give you a, little, a quick run up and down. It's basically Final Fantasy meets Disney. So you know, you got you know, you got Goofy, Donald, Mickey. Um, you know, you've got. Uh, they don't have any of the Final Fantasy characters on here, but lame. You know, that's lame. Yeah, they don't. But they've got like Cloud, and I'm sure in Final, you know, Kingdom Hearts three, they'll probably have like you know the new characters like Ignis and Noctis. And, uh, Gladiolus. Gladiolus. Prom two. Prom two's the band. He is so funny. And I hope they don't have prom two. We we've had enough prom two. One so game was funny. enough. He was so <laughs> funny, dude. All right. So going back to the PlayStation two, I'm gonna give you guys a little rundown of the last two games I have for that, and uh, they're Dragon Ball Z, uh, a series that basically needs no introduction. Uh, Dragon Ball Z, you know, it's been around since the '80s. They have the new show, Dragon Ball Super. Now this game is called. Super Dragon Ball Z, and it is not a Dragon Ball Super game, but <laughs> it is a fighting game. Uh, it's actually developed by the team who made, uh, or not the team, but some of the guys who made this game, like the lead producer, was the uh, the lead director of Street Fighter 2. Or no, he's the producer of Street Fighter 2. So yeah, it's got it's got a lot of those old like fighting game mechanics in it, and. What I really like about this game is it has Chi Chi as a playable character. Now she's not that good. Um, obviously, she's a human. She's fighting Saiyans. She's fighting you know aliens and stuff like that. But she's not a great character. But I still enjoy her. She's got a few fun fun combos. Boo was my guy in this game though. Uh, it's not a well known game. It's not very expensive either. So I definitely recommend it. Uh, it's a really cool one. There's no manual in this one, sadly, guys. But um, it does have some manuals. And uh, the next one I want to talk about. Is Dragon Ball Z Budokai 2. Now, people will argue all the time about what's the best Dragon Ball Z game inside the Budokai 3 or Budokai Tenkaichi 3. They're both wrong. It's Budokai 2. <laughs> They're absolutely wrong. Definitely Budokai 2. Um, the story mode is the worst in this game. I won't, I won't lie. It isn't very fun to go through. And, you know, 
you can basically cheese it as much as you want, but uh, it has the best combat, and um, it doesn't rely on Dragon Rush, and the people who've played Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3 know exactly what I'm talking about. When Dragon Ball, or uh, Dragon Rush, is the absolute, just, just worst, just worst. Um, my final game I brought on to talk to you guys about is one I've been playing recently on the Nintendo Switch because I'm a dirty, dirty cheater, and I imported it from Japan, uh, and that's uh, Deskaya 5. Now it's been available for the PlayStation 4 for a few years now, and I'm not I've never played a Disgaea game before this. Um yeah, I know, I'm I'm doing myself a disservice on that one. But uh if you've ever played like uh Fire Emblem and stuff like that, it's really reminiscent of those, but uh, on a much larger scale. You know, you get a lot of troops, you know, you get a lot of uh a lot of a lot of different characters and I think that if you're into like that sort of humor, it really does uh resonate very well with uh, Brother, just let you know. its audience. It's got a lot of like in jokes and a lot of like references to other uh, NIS games. Um, so if you guys have ever played like um, uh, what's another one? Uh, the Hyperdimension Neptunia games. They make references to that. They make references to uh, the Witch in the Hundred something. I can't remember. They literally have a character that's named NISA, and she's like one of the best characters you can get right off the bat. It, it's it's a zany little game. It doesn't take itself too seriously, but. Um, the last game I'm actually going to bring Dan back on real quick. We're going to rotate out here. I'll have him come back and talk to you guys about is the big one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who doesn't love this game, everybody? This is one of my absolute favorites of all time, probably right behind number three or number six, as a lot of people like to go by. Um, this, the, the story in this game, the characters, it, it, this thing was so ahead of its time. Uh, when it came out, it was unreal. Everybody played it. Everybody wanted it. If you didn't play it, you were lame. And if you still haven't played it, uh, I hate to say it, but you're lame. You need to play it. You should try it out. It's a lot of fun. Uh, there's so many characters you can play as. The way they set up their uh, spells with materia and everything, it was just amazing. Um, you, had, you had all these side jobs you could do. The, the world was Thanks huge. In, you, had, you could do so many things. And then the story arc was just stellar. Absolutely stellar. One of the main characters you think... Is going to be around for the whole game, ends up dying. I'm not going to give it away for anybody who hasn't played it, but yeah, they end the, up dying. For the four people who don't <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Cloud is awesome. Even though he doesn't say a whole lot in the game, um, I think he's just a great character. I love his big hefty sword that he that he just crushes people with. Uh, when you reach his highest, what's the, what, are their, uh, what are their moves called? Um, limit Breaks? Limit Breaks, yes. His highest Limit Break is amazing. It demolishes anybody, even Sephiroth. That's another good point. Sephiroth is also probably one of the best bad guys I've ever seen in a video game. Uh, the cutscenes when they when this came out, it was just so it really set the tone for the game. Really got people uh, hating him. You know what I mean? But you also kind of felt for him at the same time because of everything he's been through. Um, like I said, I could give everything away because I'm sure there's a few out there who haven't played it. But just the range of characters. Probably my three favorite would be Cloud, Tifa, and Barrett. Maybe Vincent. Vincent was pretty cool, but he gets locked in sometimes. Uh, John, what about you, brother? Um, <laughs> I have actually not played Final Fantasy VII all the way. I've played all of the... Uh, what's the first area called? Um, uh, Midgar. Midgar, yeah. I've played all the Midgar stuff. Um, once the open world came out, or once you get into the big map, I, I think me as a young kid was just... A little too overwhelmed, overwhelmed by it, right. so I kind of dropped it after that. But yeah, I, I, I liked um, Tifa. I think she was probably one of my yeah, favorite characters. She's awesome. And then I, I'm a big Cloud fan. Cloud's um, a beast. I, I, you know, you work alongside him in Kingdom Hearts and stuff like that, so I know him. Right, know, right. In some, in some way, I know Cloud. <laughs> uh, play him in Smash too. Uh, you know, anyone who plays the Smash knows that Cloud is one of the best characters in doubles, if not just one of the best characters in the game, just period, because Beast. he's got incredibly fast moves with low cooldown and huge knockback. He's kind of a powerhouse yep. until Bayonetta got put in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is an animal. Uh, it's just a great game. I love this game. They're actually doing a remake of it. I believe it comes out, if not later this year. It or come out definitely next year at the earliest. I next think. year, and as John says, at the be, earliest. They're going to be breaking it up. It's going to be three different parts for that one. Instead so. of three discs, this game was three discs, which at the time was also revolutionary. Nobody had ever created a game with up with that much content in it. Yeah. Uh, it was really neat. Definitely easily 100 hours in that game. Oh, way, way. That's, that's not even doing everything. Exactly. You want to do everything. Oh, You're man. Really gonna have you want to get couple sets of hundreds. You want to get all the chocoboos. You want to get uh, all the material. Whatever. <laughs>
Uh, you want to get all the materia. You want to get all the uh, summons, man. You just spend an hours in that game. I mean, countless hours de defeating the ultimate weapons. Uh, they were just crazy hard, dude. Especially if you didn't have the manual or the uh, uh, the book. The guides, oh yeah. my god, man, that, that game was tough. Really, really tough. <clears throat> But like I said, they are coming out with a remake of it. It looks really good. If you haven't looked it up, uh, you should check it out. <clears throat> There's plenty of gameplay footage. It's going to be a little bit different than what everybody's used to, uh, especially with the old game. It's kind of like a hack and slash, but Final Fantasy style. Uh, kind of, I think it's going to be kind of like uh, Final Fantasy 15 is. Yeah. Um, so it should be really good. It should be really good. Yeah, hey guys, uh, let us know what your favorite Final Fantasy game is actually in the comments. We like... Uh... Comments are really good for us. <laughs> <laughs> we love comments. Um, they, they show love the likes. People, people do enjoy the videos. So throw a comment. What's your favorite Final Fantasy game? And you know, give a little blurb as to why. Give us a little to. love. A little love. You know, I think my favorite, even though I never really completed any of them, is right now seven. Um, Fifteen might actually take it, but you know, I haven't played six yet, so I can't really, I can't really one hundred percent say. That's my heart. I've been right told there. to play six. That's my heart. I've been told to play ten. I've been told to play, you know, seven. Um, so hopefully one day I'll get around to them and actually play all the play all games. You know, stop being lazy. Yeah, that, out of all the, out of all the Final Fantasy games, definitely Final Fantasy VI or three in the states, as it's known, uh, is probably my absolute favorite. There's so many characters in the game. It just it revolutionized the genre. Uh, the, the the espers, the spell system, the the uh, um, the rages. I mean, everything. All these all these characters had different abilities and everything, and it was just so unlike anything that had been out at the time. And it, I still play it to this day. I actually have a game going on at home right now, so I love it. Sabin's the man. Better watch out. Tara's also awesome. Can't can't beat with her. You know, mess with her. But uh, once again, it is the month of May, and we are having some great deals. Yeah. You need to get them down here and, and get your hands on uh, some of these deals. I know I'm going to. John said he's going to. I'm sure our brothers and sisters at the other stores will be doing the same thing. Maybe even the head honchos, Chris or uh, Greg and uh, Garrett. We'll be doing that as well. You mean Chris and Garrett? Chris and Garrett, excuse me. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. I always get the two brothers uh, mixed up. But yeah, thanks, thanks everyone for uh, joining, joining in. Uh, the guys who watch live, you're the, you're the real heroes. The people who watch the vods, like I said, you guys, even though the the live guys are the heroes, you know, <laughs> I'm not gonna demean anyone who watches it. Anyone who, especially, makes it this far, you know, we've been going on for like 20, 30 minutes. So I uh, thank everyone for joining, and we will see you next week. Next week. Thanks again for tuning in. Come and see us down here at Cartridge's Glory, Bucky's Town Pike. Oh, I can't reach it from here.